Great news, my fellow Activision plans. We're getting away almost scot-free. Not really. Uh, but Activision are now basically going to get away with everything for, you know, barely any cost. Yep, for what ultimately amounts to less than one day of revenue. Yeah, there you go. Problem solved. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. I'm sure everyone's happy. Yeah, the entire drama of 2021 just nicely under the rug. Thanks, uh, Judge Fisher. Yeah, and uh, for the cool price of $18 million. Mm. Yes. So, uh, right, federal court judge approved that $18 million settlement to the EEOC that we had talked about. Yep. Um, now, the fun thing is that their <laughs> annual revenue is $8.8 .8 billion, US dollars, <laughs> which is $24 million a day. So, basically, you know, in a, in a just under a day, they have uh, paid for the whole problem. And Absolutely. the thing, though, is that this going through and being approved does actually have some implications. Yeah. Because it, it does, it means that some things are considered settled. Yeah, that's exactly the thing where it's like the, this in just like the isolation of, that's oh, just the EEOC case. That's okay. Like, oh, the DFE, it's you're still like, they're, they're still there. They're still pushing where we're ahead with their big suit. But the problem is that uh, a certain clause in this decree, if anyone goes, well, I'll take the, I'll take the guaranteed money now then they um they may just be throwing all of the Californian agencies' hard work completely under the bus. Yeah, and uh, certainly if you were a rioter mm -hmm. and you did that yeah. and the initial proposed very small settlement went through, you would have got feck all compared to what the rioters ended up getting Yep. whenever the big guns came in. So for a quick recap here, there's the DFEH. They are the group that basically, you know, they, they broke the whole big story, filed the big lawsuit that we heard about. Now, they are a California agency. We've then got the EEOC, which is a federal agency. They filed a far less aggressive suit, and they were immediately in discussions about a settlement. It was very agreeable to Activision Blizzard overall. Now, the same day the suit was filed, they announced a settlement that included creating an $18 million compensation fund. Now, this is a fund that was heavily criticized because, uh, well, number one, it overall wasn't really covering all of the things that happened. Yeah. Also, $18 million, you might think, wow, that's a lot of money, and it is for you and me. But in a case like this, where there are so many different people impacted, um, where you're dealing with Californian salaries, which are generally yeah. quite large, and also multiple years of grievances, you can see how this really would not divide up amongst a large quantity of people. Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, the riot case was said to be between... I think it was just about 1,060 or so employees that were female and then 1,300 female contractor workers or in around that of the like the actual claimants or people who uh, could technically be claimants. And, you know, you divide uh, 18 million up by that number and you've got like seven, eight thousand dollars a piece, which is, you know, all right if you had it for free. But when you're getting it because you've lost possibly hundreds of thousands in salary or, uh, you know, tens of thousands in emotional damage, it's a different story. Like. Yeah, so the DFEH uh, basically motioned to intervene here, but they were denied by the judge. And then what happened just this week on Monday is the DFEH's appeal to the Ninth Circuit was denied. Hmm. So basically it means the EEOC thing is going through. Activision yep. are going to be able to settle under very agreeable terms that, uh, well, not, you know, that not only does it help solve this, but it helps them out in other ways too. Indeed. And uh, it's it's interesting to me that there was this, the whole thing about the EEOC suit was like it was the same day they announced the settlement. So the EEOC clearly weren't like going super hard in on them. It was like, but yeah, here's here's our suit, but we'll settle right away and get this kind of it feels a little bit like the EEOC were complicit in helping them kind of brush it under the rug. Or I mean there's the more charitable angle of they wanted to get the meaningful change, which we'll talk about like the, what the decree means, because it's not just the eighteen million dollars. There is a couple of other things that like they're actually doing yeah. under the scenes, but so in the degree, it basically talks about them cleaning up shop, having better policies, that sort of thing. Yeah. Right? That's essentially what, uh, yeah, what all of these come down to. Mm -hmm. Then for the 18 million, well, here's that, uh, that bit. And then for any excess funds, they go to charity or just to Activision Blizzard's own uh, diversity and inclusion fund. Yeah, which is, you know, obviously <laughs> there's not going to be a whole pile will go there. But at the same time, it's like you get, okay, well, here's your fine. Also, some of that will funnel back into you again. So, uh, you know, definitely makes you think, who, who's written these terms and why are they so easy? Why are they so soft? Yeah, and of course, being a settlement, 
nothing in this decree is nor should be construed as an ad uh, admission of wrongdoing or liability by defendants either in this proceeding or in any other proceeding. Yeah, so legally speaking, it's not like, you know, they settle on this. The DFE it can't just go, they settled on that. Clearly they're guilty of something. They legally, well, I mean, obviously like that'll influence any jury stuff or anyone looking yeah. at the case, but like legally speaking, that's not actually true. Legally speaking, Activision Blizzard did nothing wrong here. Yeah. Great. So the other parts then, basically no discrimination or harassment allowed, no retaliation allowed. They now have an ex uh, exterior EOC consultant and an internal coordinator uh, who are basically just going to be looking at, you know, all of those different steps and there'll be yearly audits for three years. Yep. Now, as for that 18 million, uh, well, according to uh, CWA, who are a union, it is woefully adequate. This would only uh, provide the maximum settlement for 60 workers. If any significant number of workers receive the maximum under federal law, there will be little available for many other workers who are adversely affected. I love how it just ends with a, please explain. <laughs> <laughs> now, VGC are pointing out, I think, something that needs to be pointed out, and that is Riot. Because Riot previously settled a similar lawsuit. It was for $10 million, mm -hmm. but the, it got blocked. DFEH actually stepped in, and that number was driven up to $100 million. Yep. So clearly we see a, a situation here where Blizzard are really getting off where Riot didn't. Yeah, and that is, you know, obviously that one for Riot was a class action suit. In this case, it's the federal agency who got involved. And I don't know how much of this is true, but there's definitely, like, there's a lot of uh, whispers going around of the EEOC basically buddying up because a lot of, um, a lot of Activision's, like, top brass were previously uh, in legal stuff in yeah. and around the federal uh, place and around the military stuff. There's a lot of whispers. It's just literally the EEOC just coming to help them out by going, oh, no, no, we technically supersede the uh, the DFEH because we're the federal level. And there was a way around that and the DFEH kind of blew it by being too late on that. There's some federal ruling that means the DFEH should have control, but they ended up kind of not having it. But That's unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate that they kind of scuffed that, but... It basically it is just the EOC, who are mates of these people. Went, oh yeah, we'll 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 come in and sort this out for you. No problem. Obviously, you know that's you can't say that legally in any capacity, but it's what I've seen people talk about. And you're like, that's really grim that they're kind of, you know, if the DFEH had their way, maybe Activision Blizzard would be. I mean, it's not even like a hundred million would be punishing to them if they're pulling in twenty four million revenue a day. Yeah, but it would certainly be more than eighteen million, which is just feels, you know inappropriate to people yeah so there's what you said about the numbers where you know if you split that amongst 2300 people that would be seven thousand eight hundred dollars yep. um but overall like this isn't just somebody had a rough year or got you know yeah. hard done by once or twice i think the point especially for the maximum federal claims of yep. three hundred thousand dollars that's when somebody has you know lost perhaps multiple years of potential career advancement mm -hmm. um, and if you track forward the future uh, course of that and you think about you know how money works over time that ends up being quite a lot of losses uh, but there is a very juicy bit uh so this is the juicy bit right hmm. if you want part of this 18 million you basically waive your right to getting anything from the dfeh case this mm -hmm. is the bit where it really does just look like activision <laughs> blizzard are being helped out by other legal people yeah so if you look at this right I understand that the Californian Department of Fair Housing, uh, Fair Employment and Housing has filed suit against Activision Blizzard Publishing and Blizzard in the Los Angeles Superior Court. I understand that in the DFEH lawsuit, uh, they've you know brought claims on behalf of female workers of Activision Blizzard. By signing this release, I waive any right I may have to recover any monetary damages or other relief the DFEH may uh, recover in the lawsuit for sexual harassment, pregnancy discrimination, or related retaliation. Mm -hmm. Don't sign this. Yep. Why is this here? C come on. Yeah, the, basically, the, <laughs> wow. they're, they're turning it into almost like a game of deal or no deal, where it's like, well, you take the easy option, or do you want to gamble on the, the option that'll get you better returns? That's what it kind of feels like, because the DFEH case isn't set in stone yet. And that, like, that trial, I think the trial date for that's like the tw tw February 2023? I think so. The DFEH case is still a long way out from being solved. So if you want some some remuneration now, you kind of have to. And there's one other small part, which is the uh, 
in order to like make sure this consent decree is fair, there's a clause in here that's basically they'll give uh, four hundred and fifty dollars an hour in legal fees to any claimant who wants to speak with a lawyer about the consent decree and like whether they should sign it what damage it'll do because they don't expect people to completely understand this themselves they kind of know the people will go yeah. that's a legal contract can i get a, a hand with like reading this and a lot of the reporting is coming out going 450 dollars an hour in legal fees in uh what do you call it in like la and around this area literally peanuts like that's disgusting there was a, i can't remember i can't remember who it was but someone was saying that it's there's a lot of lawyers literally wouldn't take that because $450 an hour means they'd probably spend a couple minutes of that hour actually working on it and that could en end up being treated as malpractice. So it's that case of like n only the worst lawyers in the entire county will actually take them up on this because you're just going, eh, yeah, yeah you, can, you can technically get a lawyer but we won't pay the lawyer very much so your lawyer choices are going to be the worst of the bunch. It's almost as if this seems completely stacked against normal people with normal amounts of money really <laughs> what a surprise yeah uh, that's insane yep god compared Boom. to legal fees here that's yeah. like i mean that stuff's expensive here but it's you know genuinely like affordable enough mm -hmm. that's insane so basically there you go the system is stacked against people if you want a proper legal reading of this sort of good luck to you yep uh and they're probably going to get away scot-free. Um, it depends how many people actually sign this. Yeah. I have a feeling that given just how well mobilized um, this sort of you know, anti-company movement is that a lot of people will not. I'm hoping so, yeah. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping there's enough of that kind of movement of like literally, you know, because the spearheads of all this stuff and they are well organized, like the communication workers of America stepping in and uh, fighting back against it where they can. It's like, hopefully they all listen and go, we disagree with this. The judge says that's fine. We actually disagree with this. We don't want to take this. Although I don't know how that legally stands because it's because it's the EEOC versus uh, Activision Blizzard, not the actual, you know, these these people aren't actually involved in the lawsuit. Literally, it's like on behalf of them, so it gets a bit complicated there. But oh, at, at least you can take a look at the DFEH riot thing yeah. that went up to 100 million. And even yeah. if you're just thinking, how do I get as much money from this situation <laughs> as I can? Which yeah. I think anyone is going to do in this situation i mean yep. certainly if you've been completely screwed over for a long time yeah get as much from the fuckers as you can of course um, yeah. so in that case i think maybe just wait and see but i suppose the risk is that if the dfeh case then completely falls through and you've missed the boat on this then you're high and dry yep. or even if you need money now and it takes too long yeah. like like would you say no to eight nine thousand dollars now versus getting 20 or 30 in the next couple of years yeah, like what if you were, I mean, like if you're some senior engineer or something yeah. and, you know, you have such a large quantity of, uh, you know, of money in terms of salary and stuff that maybe you could get the federal maximum. Well, somebody who's maybe in QA on a whole bunch of less money and for them, maybe 30 grand would very much help their immediate circumstances. Yep. You could totally see somebody going for that. Yeah, for sure. So there you go. Basically, the uh, the whole thing, funny enough, is uh, stacked in the favor of the corporate entities. What a big <laughs> surprise in terms of the bottom line and all of that. This will uh, be them essentially getting away scot-free. They will be able to say, hey, there you go. We've signed a settlement with the, uh, the affected parties. We're now going to move on. Here's all the great things that we're instituting to fix this. We've even got oversight from the EEOC to make sure it all actually happens. There you go. We're reformed. You know, put a line under it, move on. That's exactly what they want. And I think it's no surprise that Activision, Blizzard almost were publicizing the EEOC side of things. Oh, they Like oh, they yeah. were so loud and vocal with their press releases, like blah, blah, blah. We're happy to work with this org. Pretty clear that this is just what they want. Yeah, I mean, they did the same today. I didn't think it was worth really going into, but they basically did the same today where when this was approved, they had this massive press release from Bobby been like, oh yeah, this is us. We've, we, this is all the stuff we're doing. You know, we're also putting like 250 million into this uh, fund and stuff. And you're like, ah, yeah, this is literally a PR move to get away from the problem, which to be fair, they're not going to not do that. But at the same time, it's like, you're gonna you're happy to put 250 million into a fund, but you'll settle for 18 million when it comes to the actual victims. All right, you dirty bastard. 
Yeah, well, hey, I mean, they, they have their legal departments. Yeah. They have all these people whose, you know, job is to minimize impact to the company. Yep. They're obviously going to try as hard as they can, and mm -hmm. uh, evidently they have got a good result for their bosses. Okay, that's it. This isn't a video really about video games, so nope. we don't have much to leave you on. But there you go. <laughs> The rats are probably going to get away, and Bobby's probably going to get his lovely golden parachute. Mm -hmm. Because that's just how some of these stories end up ending. Alright, goodbye!